So you've just got yourself a brand new phone. It's sealed, it's fresh, it's new, it's the latest model out, and you cannot wait to get it home, crack it open, and turn it on for the first time. But once it's on, what's the first thing you look at? It's definitely the camera, right? You run around your house looking for things to take pictures of, probably your dog, or your hamster, or your cat, or your snake, or whatever pet you've got. Compare the quality of your old phone, and nine times out of 10, you're happy, and quite frankly, you've probably not changed any settings at this point. But there are features within camera apps now on mobile phones like the Google Pixel 7 Pro I've got here that are designed to push the quality a little bit further. Now sure the default camera setting does look good but what if your subject has a bit of background blur to really enhance that professional look or you want to remove that annoying distraction from the background of your image? Well good news you can. With some of the new quality features and the addition of some AI capabilities thanks to the Tensor G2 chip there is a lot possible with the Google Pixel 7 Pro. In this this video I'm going to be running through my top five camera features on the Google Pixel 7 Pro that are sure to enhance and even give you some more passion to take more photos with your phone. So before we do take a look though let's run through the specifications you get with the camera on the Pixel 7 Pro. Around the back you have three cameras the first is a 50 megapixel 25 millimeter wide camera with an aperture of f1.9 the second is a 48 megapixel camera 120 millimeter telephoto lens with an aperture of f3.5 and five Finally, your 12 megapixel, 126 degree ultra wide camera with an aperture of f2.2. So you've really got a good selection there, but more on these when we discuss the specific features I've found are the best. Depending on the feature, there is a bit of wizardry that goes into producing your images. Also to include here, the phone is also capable of filming at 4K 60 frames per second at its highest quality, and can also pull off some nice 1080p 240 frame per second slow motion as well. The selfie camera around the front is a 10.8 megapixel 21 millimeter ultra wide camera with an aperture of f2.2 and is also capable of filming up to 4k 60 frames per second so there's that too that we'll be taking a look at in this video though of course i'm not the biggest selfie taker in the world so the features here won't really make the cut just being honest here some honorable mentions though you do get your portrait mode for that blurry background so you you can do a, a night sight selfie and also take advantage of the long exposure and action plan modes too. But we're here to talk about what's in front of you, the types of modes that help you capture a scene. First up is the macro mode. Now this is a little bit biased because I am a huge fan of macro photography and the different types of detail that you can get from taking photos of things up close. The Google Pixel 7 Pro doesn't have a dedicated macro lens. Instead, what it does do is use its ultra wide lens and some auto focusing to get the subject as sharp as possible. The minimum distance you can be from your subject is about three centimeters, so not really too bad. Now, most examples you see of macro photography are usually the center of a flower because they look so damn awesome. And to be honest with you, I've not really produced much different. I must say though, the results here are absolutely outstanding. I've put the Pixel 7 Pro up against a Sony a7R2 with a dedicated 30 millimeter macro lens and the results when looking at them in person through the Pixel screen is just breathtaking. Of course, if you're blowing them up to large print sizes, the Sony image is going to win. But for photo sharing apps like Instagram, you'll get an amazing result. Following on, I did take a couple of macro shots of some rusty scaffolding pipe and some wet rope. And the quality here is really unbelievable as well. I've also taken a picture of a leaf and there was a ladybug on a wall that I took a picture of as close as possible to that. And that looked absolutely awesome as well. I also did take a picture of my cereal as well. And all I can say is what a great macro camera on a phone. One of the best out there right now, for sure. The next favorite of mine is definitely a bit niche. Inside the camera app is a mode called Action Pan, and the idea behind this is to capture a subject while in motion. So you have a nice blurry background and a subject in focus, which represents speed in a way. The mode is definitely for situational purposes, like sports or cool action shots of your dog running around, but the effect when pulled off does work really well. During testing, we used a normal road car and tried two different speeds I thought that by going faster it would blow the background more for the most part this is true though the pixel 7 pro did have trouble keeping the car in focus at 60 mile an hour the car did blur somewhat so it didn't look as sharp in the frame however once we halved the speed and kept the car at 30 the effect looked much better as more of the car was in focus there's also a lot to be said about the actual subject color and the background that the phone is trying to separate it from as well the car looks quite good because it is massively contrasted the red against the green and blue and gray background really stands out. However, 
when my neighbor's cat came to visit, I tried it again, getting the cat to chase a toy around the garden, but because the cat is gray and the background was darker, the AI of the phone couldn't really differentiate between subject and background. So while yes, this is a really cool feature with the new Google Pixel 7 Pro's camera, it does really depend on the speed of the subject and the color between the subject and background, unless I'm just a really bad photographer and my framing skills just aren't very good. Now I know that this next feature is pretty much the most basic of functions on the new Pixel 7 Pro's camera, but seeing this feature in person, I was incredibly impressed at how well this phone actually held its quality at the top end. The magic here is the fact that Google's Pixel 7 Pro has two cameras, 150 megapixel wide and the 48 megapixel telephoto, and the fact that the camera uses the center 12 megapixels of the sensor to achieve a higher quality image at a zoomed in state. The camera has several increments that you can select from, 0.5 times, one times, two times, and five times, and then from here you can pinch to zoom zoom to get right up to 30 times. And once you're fully at the maximum zoom, the pictures that come out of the camera are actually still pretty decent. I've got no real complaints about them here. Sure, they're not as sharp as say a DSLR with some 400 millimeter telephoto lens, but this is a phone at the end of the day. What did you really expect? The photos still look absolutely wicked. And if you're again viewing them on a mobile phone screen and not blowing them up large or printing them out or anything like that, it is again very very good quality okay so this third function isn't really to do with the photo mode it's to do with video and i am an absolute sucker for slow motion now i think i've got to thank the slow-mo guys here on youtube for that now although i can't afford my own proper 10,000 fps phantom camera like they've got i can however use my pixel 7 pro to get close kind of. The phone can shoot at a maximum frame rate of 240 frames per second, which isn't really enough to stop the action, but it is certainly enough to dramatize it. I kept it pretty simple. I used some milk flowing into a coffee, I poured some cereal into a bowl, and I splashed it with milk, and I fizzed up a can of drink, and it all looked pretty special. Now, the final feature I do want to talk about is the Pixel 7 Pro's image stabilization capabilities, which comes in four forms. Standard for light movement, locked for far away still shots, like if you're filming a, like, I don't know, a landscape scene, for example. Active for a lot of movement, like if you're running around chasing a subject, and even a smooth cinematic pan, which will be great for establishing shots or even some B-roll when making YouTube videos. With all of these, it offers a smooth way to capture footage, and it does remind me of the type of footage you could get from a GoPro or similar style action camera. And again, because it is video, you do get the 4K filming capabilities. So there you go, five features on the camera of the new Google Pixel 7 Pro that I personally think are some of the best features available. What are some of your favorites? Let us know in the comments below. And if you like this video, make sure to subscribe as we've got some great Google Pixel 7 videos coming up real soon, and you're not going to want to miss those.